there in just a second. I want to thank our song leaders uh, for lifting us with praises to the Most High God. I want to thank Brother Jason Stewart for that intercessory prayer. I want to welcome all of our visitors and guests who are with us on today. We know you could have been anywhere, but we're thankful that the Holy Spirit led you to worship with us on this Sunday morning. And we pray and hope that something is, is said that will cause you to uh, want to come back and be with us again. We are a church here at Parkview Drive that simply believes what the Bible teaches, that you should hear the word of God. And in that word is the blessed gospel of Jesus Christ a gospel that is able to save us all, the story that tells us that Jesus left heaven and came and walked on earth as a man, and he lived a sinless life, and that he was willing to give up his life for our sake on Calvary's cross, shed his blood, was buried in a grave, and rose on the third day, and now sits at the right hand of God with all power, not some power, not most power, but all power in his hand. We're to believe that with all of our heart. And because of the sacrifice that he gave, we should be willing to repent of our sins and try to walk with God and turn away from walking with this world. We should be willing to confess that we believe Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. We should be willing to be baptized into his church, the one that he purchased with his blood, the one that bears his name, and try to live the best life we can for God until God calls us home. That's what we believe, and we hope that uh, you will grow to believe that if there's anyone here who doesn't believe that, we're willing to study with you to help you see what thus saith the Lord. Praise. Praise is defined as expressing warm approval or admiration of something or someone. To commend, to applaud, to sing praises of. Brother Keith read our scripture text from Psalm 148 that says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him and all his angels. Praise him and his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, you heavens of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He also established them forever and ever. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures, and all the depths, fire and hail and snow and clouds, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. He made them a decree which shall not pass away. Let them praise the name of the Lord for his name, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the heaven, the earth. Y'all, that's God. And he deserves to be praised. The psalmist said everybody and everything has a reason to sing God's praises. Now, your song might not be my song, but we all have a song. We all have a season. We all have a reason to give God some praise. And the title of my message for this morning is, That's My Song. That's my song. With our scripture text coming from the book of Psalms, I, I think it's important that we expound just for a minute on this book. In Hebrew, Psalms means praises. In Greek, Psalms means songs of praises. What we know as the book of Psalms was a Jewish hymnal, a song book a collection of 150 sacred songs and poems for God's people. Amen. In, in, in one part of, 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 of Psalms, in chapters 120 through 134, uh, you have what they even, I would call a spiritual playlist. Anybody got a playlist on their phone? Yeah, right. 
You put some of your favorite songs together and you may be taking a trip out of town or you may be cleaning the house and you, you play that certain playlist and you, know, you may have a jazz playlist, you may have a, a country playlist, you may have whatever type of playlist you like to listen to. You play it when you're coming and going and doing certain things. And in and, 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 and Psalms chapter 120 through uh, uh, 134, it's, it's a section that's called the Songs of Ascent. It was a spiritual playlist, a group of songs that the children of Israel would sing on their pilgrimage up to Jerusalem for one of the three annual uh, festivals they would have each year. And they would sing it up there. And Jerusalem was kind of up on a hill a little bit. And so as they ascended up the hill, they would sing their song. They had their own spiritual playlist, y'all. Playlist where they praised God. David, King David of Israel, the man after God's own heart. David is credited with having written at least 73 of the 150 songs and poems that we find in the book of Psalms. The psalmist in Psalms chapter 77 and verse number 13, he had worship on his mind when he said, your way, O God is in the sanctuary. I don't know, I don't know about you, but it's, it, it feels a little bit different when you come to the sanctuary. Yeah, we can, we can say amen if you can. Amen. It feels a little different when you come to the sanctuary. Yes, right. Now, we can sing praises to God at home and when we're alone and when we're at work and when we're on the road, but when you're in the sanctuary, yes, it feels a little bit different. Yes, and then when we go to Psalm 122, in verse number one, he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'd be happy to come worship God. I'd be happy to come into the house of the Lord because no matter what's going on outside, when I'm in the Lord's house, I have a reason to shout. I have a reason to sing. I have a reason to praise his holy name. According to Hebrews chapter 8 and verse number 2, it tells us that Jesus Christ, as our high priest, is now the minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle. And then when Paul writes his letter to the church of Christ in Corinth, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 16, he reminds us that we are the church and that the church is the temple of God. And Paul says, don't you know you are the temple of God? And the spirit of God dwells where? In you. And then we come back to the psalmist. Psalms chapter 42 and verse number 1 and 2. He writes, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Y'all, that, that's a relationship. Because of the things that have happened in the past, the psalmist understands it ain't no place like being with the Lord. Y'all, when we are in the sanctuary, when we are able to come together, uh, folks in Zoom, if you can leave the house, come on out to the sanctuary. Folks on Facebook, I'm looking at you, I'm talking to you. If you can leave the house, come to the sanctuary. If you can go to work, you can come to the sanctuary. If you can go to school, you can come to the sanctuary. If you can go to the store and grocery shop and eat at a restaurant, you can come to the sanctuary. I just want you to come to the sanctuary because when we commune with God, we can all together shed tears of appreciation for what he did for us. When we, when we come to the sanctuary and we're able to give to God, we can do it together with joy. When we come to the sanctuary, we get to grow together in his word and we hunger and thirst for even more of it. When we come to the sanctuary, we can sing praises unto his name. And it gives us a reason to stand up on our feet. 
to raise our holy hands, to clap if we want to, even to stump our feet because of how good God has been to us. Gives us a reason to say, that's my song. That is my song. So brothers and sisters, I'm going to ask you a question. Any of you, do you have certain music that puts you in a certain mindset? How many of you, at any time in your life, listen to your, your favorite music while you was cleaning the house? How many of you listen to your favorite music when you're working or your favorite music while you're driving or, or having a good time? Now, if you grew up like I grew up, many Saturday mornings was a time of getting the household chores done. You know, young people, we had to clean our room. We had to do our laundry. We had to clean the bathroom. We had to dust. We had to, to mop. We had to sweep. We had to vacuum. And then you might have had to go outside and do a little yard work or wash a car. And yet we still found time to go outside and play. It was hard work, but it taught us. It taught us discipline. It taught us appreciation for what our parents provided for us. And it taught us what it took to take care of stuff when we got our own stuff. Right, right. Now, I don't want to seem if I, as if our, our parents were slave drivers because we had some fun. And to keep our minds relaxed while we was doing those chores, we usually would have some music playing. So some of us was cleaning and sweeping and mopping while dancing and singing to some of our favorite songs. Say amen if you can. Amen. You ain't got to look like that in the church. I know we did it. You ain't got to say nothing. We still do it. All right? But when we hear those songs today, we say, oh, oh, turn that up. That's my song. Or perhaps you played sports and it was this one song that got you amped up and energized to play the game at your best level. And when you hear that, that song today, you say, oh, no, nope, don't change the channel. That's my song. And some of our married couples, you remember that songs that are, that are special to you. You remember the song that was playing when you was on your first date. Or maybe you remember the song that you had your first dance to or you're one of your favorite artists you went to go see in concert or, or you might remember your wedding song. And that's why every time uh, this song, um, You by Jesse Powell comes on, that's the song that was playing when my bride was walking down the aisle. All right. And every time it comes on, she'll look over at me and say, baby, they playing our song. <laughs> and I praise God. And I'm honored to say, brothers and sisters, this Tuesday... May 17th, that's been our songs for 25 years. We'll have our 25th wedding anniversary. Amen. And after 13,148,730 minutes, I'm happy to say, baby, it's still you. It's still you. And our love is my favorite song. All right. Let's get into this lesson. Let's get into this lesson. I'm going to give this to you, and then I'm going to take my seat. Brothers and sisters, just like our lives are filled with, with memories and moments that are highlighted by certain songs that take us there, the scripture is filled with songs and inspirational scriptures and motivational scriptures that remind us of how good God has been to us. One of my favorite scriptures is the 23rd Psalm. 23rd Psalm. We learned it as a kid. We repeated it. We, it was one of those memory verses that we learned. But let's, let's look at Psalm 23 and let's break down the 23rd Psalm. Beginning at verse 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. That's a relationship. It says, I shall not want. That's provision. He's a provider. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. That means he look out for my best interest, for my wellness. It said he leads me beside the still waters. He want me to have peace in my life. He restores my soul. That's forgiveness, y'all. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He has plans of good works for our lives. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. 
That means he's omnipresent and he is omnipotent. He's everywhere at the same time and he's strong enough to take care of whatever life is attacking us with. He said, your rod and your staff, they, they comfort me. We don't serve a God that let us act any kind of way. He's going he gonna to discipline us. He's going to keep us in line because he's looking out for our best interests. It says in verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil and my cup runneth over. He said, we're going to sit at his banquet table. Don't worry about the folks that don't want you there. He said, I got a place prepared for you. Verse 6, he closes and he says, the psalmist says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, for I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Saying God's going to make a way for us and he wants us to come home to him. That's a reason to sing praises. That's a reason to sing praises to the name of God. I don't know how many of y'all in here uh, uh, need a little peace in your life. I don't know how many, how many needs to be forgiven of anything. I don't know how many of us need some discipline in our life. I don't know how many of you have, have been shunned and shut away from things, but we serve a God who wants to take care of us, who wants to lead us, who wants to provide for us, who wants to bless us in so many ways so that we can be with him. That's a reason to sing. That's a reason to sing praises to his holy name. Young people, you live in a time where I know we used to say kids don't know how good they have it. That's a lie. We was wrong. We don't know how hard kids got it today. Because we, we, we misunderstand some things and we take for granted some things. Now, don't get me wrong. You got certain advantages that we wish we had. But brothers and sisters, they got some pressures and some stuff coming at them left and right. The devil is big. He's on hyperdrive right now. He attacks from every angle and every moment and every way with every person that he can get some influence through. Young people, today the devil will use people to trip you up. He's been doing it forever, and he finds more ways to do it. He wants to trip you up, and that's why you got to be careful who you surround yourselves with. Just like young people today. When I made that transition from high school to college and I was navigating my way through college, I, I had to be careful to properly evaluate and properly understand that what kind of relationship I had or, or should have had with people. You know, who, who, who's your friend and who's an associate and who's an acquaintance? Y'all know what I'm talking about? There was this one rap song that I used to listen to. And I would always listen to it to put me in a mind. Say, you know how sometimes you, you, you're trying to figure somebody out? And you're trying to see are they real, are they shysty, or, or uh, are they true, or are they just trying to be true for the moment? They fair weather, or are they, are they going to be with you, and, and all that type of stuff. The name of the song was Friend or Foe. And in one part of the song's lyrics, the rapper says, where do I sleep? Who do I turn to when I be low on my cash? Who is my friend? Who is my foe? Who do I ask when I want to know something about something and I don't know nothing and my ignorance is keeping me out in the cold? Man, it, it, now, now, in that profanity lay song, it was some wisdom up in there for me. And, 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 and I didn't sing the cuss word. I couldn't do that. But the song taught me something. I need to be careful to, to evaluate the people I associate with. And that song reminds me that I have to make a decision who's going to be my friend, who's going to be an associate, and who's going to be an acquaintance. But thanks be to God, I find inspiration and motivation in his word. When I open up the book of wisdom and I turn to Proverbs and I thumb through to chapter number 18 and I work my way down to verse number 24, Proverbs 18 and 24 says, a man who has friends must himself be friendly. But there is a friend who stick it closer than a brother. So I need to measure up my friends with the, the type of friendship, the type of relationship that Jesus is trying to give me. 
He want to establish with me if I would just allow him to have his way in my life. And then I look through 1 John and I, I go to 1 John and I get to chapter number 1 and I work my way down to 1 John chapter 1 and the verses number 9. It says, if we confess our sin, he, who, that friend Jesus, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I had to pause there because sometimes we have friends who won't forgive us for not paying them back $10 we bought. When we didn't pick them up and gave them the ride to work 10 times. But they worried about $10 and they gave us 10 cents of gas. But we serve a Jesus who's willing to forgive us for our sin and our unrighteousness if we just confess our sin to him. That's a friend. Then I worked my way over to Romans and I listened to what Paul said to the church in Rome and I find my way to Romans chapter 5 and I thumb down to verse number 8 and I remember that Paul says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I don't know how many friends are willing to die for you, but I know my friend Jesus was willing to give his life for me. Then I work my way back to Matthew chapter 11, and I look at the gospel of Matthew, and I go down to verse number 28, and I hear Jesus talking, and Jesus, that friend, Jesus, that one who sticks closer than a brother, he says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. You know, sometimes we have friends, they see us struggling, they see us straining, and they say, I'll pray for you. Jesus says, come to me, and I'll help lighten your load. That is a friend. When I read those scriptures and I find inspiration in my friend Jesus and your friend Jesus, I can sing, Jesus, my heavenly king, loves me, I know. When I think about how good God has been, I can say just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. When I think about how consistent Jesus has been in my life, when you think about how consistent Jesus has been in your life, you can say, it's good to know Jesus. Y'all know what I'm talking about because he's shown you time and time again he's going to be there for you. He's going to be there when your so-called friends can't be found, won't answer the phone, won't reply to the text. They leave your own read, young people. They, Jesus answers the call. He answers the prayer. Don't only, he don't only show up, but he shows up. It's good to know Jesus. It's good to know Jesus. That's a good song to be able to sing because he shows you that he's a friend you can depend on. That's my song. That's my song. I'm almost done. I'm, I'm almost done. Pray, Pray. When I looked through the scripture and I looked at the different names of God, one of the names of God, the scripture calls him Elohim because of his supreme and sovereign power. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have seen God's power at work in your life? You applied for that job, and your references was good, but they weren't good enough to get you through. But you remembered the words of, of James chapter 1 about the testing of your faith, and you scrolled down to verse number 6 where it says, ask in faith without doubting. So you prayed without ceasing, and you asked others to join you in prayer, and God bless you with that job. Because not only do you, like others, qualify and deserve this job, but you are covered by the blood of Jesus. Maybe that's your song. There's power in the blood of Jesus to break every chain. Because this world will try to bind us and confine us to certain things, but when we give it to Jesus and we let Jesus work it out, those chains can be broken. Have you ever seen a movie, brothers and sisters? where a battle was taking place. I like those movies where it may be like uh, uh, with, with the kingdoms and you got this army against that army. They, they own a horseback and you got some on the ground and they got the sword and their shields and they're representing a different country, a different kingdom, a different family, whoever is fighting. And one of the troops on horseback 
is carrying the flag or the, the, the crest of their family. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That flag or that banner not only identifies who they represent, but it also serves as a rally point. In case some of their soldiers got scattered, they can see where their army is because they see that flag. They see that crest. I want to take you back to the Old Testament for a minute. The Amalekites. The Amalekites were a thorn in the flesh of the nation of Israel. The Holy Scripture gives us example after example. In Numbers 14, and Judges 3, and Judges 6, and 1 Samuel 14, 1 Samuel 15, 1 Samuel 27, 1 Samuel 30, 2 Samuel 1, second, uh, and 1 Chronicles. These Amalekites was just messing with the Israelites. In the Old Testament, one of the first accounts we have, uh, as they, after they left Egypt and crossed through the Red Sea on dry ground, the Israelites rested in this place called Rephidim. It was there that the Amalekites' army attacked them. Go to Exodus chapter 17 if you got your Bibles or if you got your Bible on your smart device. Let's read a little bit about what took place. In Exodus chapter 17, we'll start reading around verse number 8 and we'll stop at verse 16. Exodus chapter 17, starting at verse 8, it says, Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Come, or he's choose us some men and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Yes, so Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Ur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. Yes, sir. And when he let, it, let down his hand, what happened? Amalek, Amalek prevailed. Right. Moses lifted his hand, Israel prevailed. Uh -huh. Rosal got, Moses got tired and he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands got heavy. Brothers and sisters, we can pick up a can of beans, a little 16-ounce can of beans that we buy at the grocery store. Sisters, a cup of cream of mushroom that you mix into some good stuff and make some good meals with. And it ain't nothing but a pound. But you hold that pound for a long time, and that pound going to start getting heavy. Moses held up that rod and Israel was winning, but he, he grew tired. His arms got heavy, and, and Amalek started to prevail. But Moses' hands became heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this for a memorial in the book and recount it or sing it, recite it, let them hear it in the hearing of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under the sun. And Moses built an altar and called its name Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. For he said, because the Lord has sworn, the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Y'all, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner. He said, Moses, you create a memorial in that spot. So they remember when they come by that spot and they see that memorial, they realize that I, was your rally point. Just like in those armies seeing that flag and that shield with that crest, they knew to come there so they can be re-strengthened and they can regroup and have a better chance of victory. God was telling Moses, he was telling Israel, he is telling you, this is your rally point. Come back to get stronger. Come back to be together. Rally together and let God give you victory. Because it's hard out there on your own. 
It's hard out there on your own. Rally to him in prayer. Rally to him in praise. Rally to him in worship. And you got you to be able to sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. You got to sing that song sometimes because the world will put you scattered out there, leave you out on your own, but you got to make a decision. I'm going to turn away from this devil. I'm going to turn away from this world. I have decided to follow Jesus. Maybe that's your song, but sometimes we have to rally to him for protection from our enemies because the devil stays on the attack. He's coming at us. He don't care how old. He don't care how young. He don't care what we got or what we don't have. He attacks because he wants to take as many souls to hell as he can because we have to rally to God for protection. And we got to remember that God is able. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. We got to remember that he is able. And we should have a song to sing when it looks like the devil's going to get us. We got to remember that God is able to snatch us from the teeth of that lion. He's able to pull us out of that fire like he did Shadrach, Meshach, and that bad. Y'all know what I'm going to say. All right. We should rally to him for healing from our sickness. We should rally to him. Because like Marvin Sapp says, we got to believe he has his hands on me. We got to rally to him for deliverance from our enemies. From our hurts, from our habits, from our hangups. Because you ain't worried about who you used to be. You're focused on dear future me. And you know that if you just trust in Jesus, the future you is gonna be better than you ever dared to be in the past. Maybe that's your song. I don't know what your song is, and your song might not be my song, but we should sing God's praises because He is worthy to be praised. Before he does it, he's worthy to be praised. While he's doing it, he's worthy to be praised. Y'all can come on, song leaders. After he's done, we should sing, our God is awesome. Maybe that's your song. Because he's already shown you that he is mighty. He's already shown you. You can get on your feet that he is holy. He's already shown you that he is great, that he's a protector. He's already shown you that he's a provider. He's already shown you that he's a deliverer. He's already shown you that he is awesome. Sometimes we have to change our playlists and start singing the right song. If you want to sing a new song, we ask you to come and give your life to Jesus. If you need to confess your sins, we ask you to come and repent and let God work on you. He will restore you. He'll give you peace. We ask you to come as our song leaders say. My God is awesome, said he can move a mountain and it keeps me in the valley and hides me from the rain. Well, my God is awesome, said he heals me when I'm broken and strength where I am weak and forever he will reign. My God is awesome, oh, awesome, oh, awesome, oh, awesome. He's mighty, 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 he's awesome, He's holy, he's holy, he's holy, he's mighty, he is awesome, and I love him, yes he is awesome, oh, awesome, well my God is awesome, said he can move, keep me in the valley and hide me from the rain. Well, my God is awesome, said he heals me when I'm broke. Strength where I am weak and forever he will reign. Well, my God is awesome.
and sisters, I praise God for having an opportunity to just stand before you and share another portion of his word. I pray that as we leave, leave here today. We're thinking about the songs we're singing in our life. Think about the praise that God deserves. Even in the troubles that we have, oh, sometimes we have to sing trouble in my way. And sometimes we do have to cry sometimes and pray sometimes. But we got to believe that Jesus will fix it if we truly give it to him and stop trying to fix it ourselves. But we also have reasons to celebrate. I'll close with saying this. You know, I, um, on yesterday our daughter graduated from college, and it was, it was one of, a very proud moment in our life. And, but that young girl, that young lady, is one of the hardest working people I know. I mean, she has always worked since she was 15. She's worked a job. She's had her own business since she was 16. She was taking college courses in high school and got out of there in four years. And, and even though she faced setbacks and challenges and, and, and things didn't always go the way that she had hoped and dreamed for, she never stopped praying. And she had a disappointment right toward the end of the school year when she didn't win a, a business competition she was in. She had plans on how she was going to use the prize money to further uh, solidify herself and her future. And we just talked and said, that's all right. Whatever God's will is, it's going to happen. We prayed. We prayed with her and her team before the, the winners were announced. And we accepted it with grace and said, just keep praying, keep doing what you're supposed to do. God's going to bless you. And so she was working and getting a resume up and putting in applications. Not only did she graduate on Saturday, but she got a call on Friday and got a job that she starts tomorrow. Amen. And when she called me, called me on Friday to tell me I was driving uh, home to take care of some stuff. And, you know, she just, I answered the phone and said, hey, what's up? I missed your call. She said, I got the job. <laughs> and I just started shouting <laughs> and screaming Amen. and praising God. Y'all, that was my song. I'm crying and shouting, and she says, stop, you're going to make me cry. I said, well, we got a reason to cry. And, 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 and then I just told her what I thought God would want her to hear for the blessing that he was giving her. And so, brothers and sisters, like we said this morning in Bible class, we keep praying. We understand the principles of prayer, what prayer can do. And we trust and believe in God and the power of prayer. And because we believe in God and what he promises and what he can do, we sing our song. We don't wait for it to happen. We praise him in advance because he's already done enough to receive our praises. May God bless you and keep you all. Amen. Say praise God. Amen again. But Rod, who always comes up and do a